อนุสรณ์ทางรถไฟสายมรณะทางรถไฟสายมรณะช่องเขาขาดเป็นตัวอย่างของการขุดเจาะอุโมงค์ของทางรถไฟสายไทยพมา่าระยะทาง415กิโลเมตรสร้างขึ้นระหว่างปีคริสตศักราช1942ถึง1943โดยบรรดาเฉลยศึกชาวอเมริกันออสเตรเลียอังกฤษและฮอลันดารวมทั้งผู้ที่ถูกเกณฑ์ชาวพมา่ามาลายูและไทยเส้นทางรถไฟจากตำบลหนองปลาดุกตัดผ่านที่ราบเรียบสู่จังหวัดกาญจนบุรีข้ามแม่น้ำแม่กลองไปตามแนวแม่น้ำแควน้อยผ่านน้ำตกปัจจุบันเป็นจุดสิ้นสุดของส่วนที่ยังใช้งานได้และอุทยานแห่งชาติไซโยผ่านด่านเจดีสามองค์ข้ามเชิงเขาเรียบชายฝั่งของสาธารณรัฐพมา่าไปถึงชุมทางรถไฟสายเมาะละเมืองและเยที่เมืองทันยูซายะทางรถไฟสายนี้เริ่มใช้ตั้งแต่เดือนตุลาคมปีคริสตศักราช1943จนถึงเดือนมิถุนายนคริสตศักราช1945และหยุดการใช้ลงเป็นครั้งคราวเนื่องจากการทิ้งระเบิดของพันธมิตรฝ่ายตะวันตกการตัดและขุดเจาะเส้นทางรถไฟสายมรณะนี้ต้องใช้แรงงานของบรรดาเฉลยศึกซึ่งต้องทำงานตลอด24ชั่วโมงตลอดระยะเวลาที่สิ้นหวังยาวนานกว่า12สัปดาห์ในปีคริสตศักราช1943สาเหตุที่ได้ชื่อว่าทางรถไฟสายมรณะสืบเนื่องมาจากทัศนียภาพของแสงไฟที่เกิดจากการใช้คบเพลิงและตะเกียงวอมแวมในระหว่างที่ขุดเจาะในเวลากลางคืนงานทั้งหมดนี้สำเร็จลงได้โดยปราศจากเครื่องจักรกลและอุปกรณ์ที่ดีนอกจากเครื่องมือเก่าแก่ล้าสมัยที่นำมาใช้ในการเจาะช่องใส่ระเบิดสำหรับระเบิดหินระยะทางรถไฟช่วงนี้จำต้องสร้างเนินดินสูงและสะพานข้ามเหวลึกหลายตอนเนื่องจากช่วงที่เป็นทางราบสูงและตัดผ่านหุบเขาลึกขึ้นไปทางเหนือสะพานข้ามเหวลึกที่มีชื่อเสียงมากที่สุดแห่งหนึ่งนั้นอยู่ในบริเวณที่มีชื่อว่าหินตกสร้างขึ้นในสามสัปดาห์ด้วยขอนไม้ที่ยังไม่ได้อายุตรึงกับหมุดไม้ตะปูไม้ไผ่ผูกติดกันและเชือกหวายเหตุที่เรียกชื่อนี้เนื่องมาจากสะพานได้ทะลายลงสามครั้งในระหว่างการก่อสร้างการขุดเจาะอุโมงค์ช่องเขาขาดและการปรับเนินดินในบริเวณนี้จะเป็นอนุสรณ์เตือนให้ระลึกถึงชีวิตนับพันที่สูญเสียไปอย่างน่าสลดใจในการก่อสร้างและอีกทั้งเป็นการระลึกถึงชาวไทยทั้งหลายที่ได้เสี่ยงชีวิตและพยันตรายมาให้ความช่วยเหลือในการนำส่งยารักษาโรคและอาหารให้แก่บรรดาเฉลยศึกเหล่านั้นตลอดระยะเวลาก่อสร้างทางรถไฟสายไทยพม่านี้ข้อมูลจากแผ่นป้ายที่ช่องเขาขาด
past because that was holding the completion of the whole lineup. I mean, they had to build bridges over rivers and they had to build road beds and all sorts of things. But this mountain, or hill, or two hills it was actually, was more or less solid granite. This place was part of the Burma Thailand Railway. In 1941, the armed forces of Japan swept westward into Southeast Asia, through Malaya, and in time through Indonesia, the Philippines, New Guinea, and Pacific Islands. They moved through neutral Thailand to support an invasion of British-ruled Burma, now Myanmar. There they threatened India. The place where you are became part of that story when the Japanese faced the problem of supporting its troops in Burma. They were concerned about the vulnerability of the Japanese shipping from submarines in the Indian Ocean going around Malaysia and up there to supply Burma. So the concept was to have this railway going through from Thailand through to Burma where they could supply their Burman troops that way. This place, Konyu Cutting, was the deepest and longest cutting along the line of the Thai-Burma Railway, which the Imperial Japanese Army forced through to speed supply and reinforcement of its forces in Myanmar. Their workforce was not Japanese. This place saw a workforce of thousands, drawn from British, Australian, Dutch and American prisoners of war, captured during the sweeps Asia and Malaya, and at the fall of Singapore, and thousands of Asian labourers, or Romusha. Hundreds of thousands of Indian slaves, they won't tell you the truth, but they're mostly Tamil Indians, and uh, uh, the poor Malayans and all that. If we had a bad time, they, they had a shocking time. They, they had no organisation. They had no, no one to lead them, no one to help them, and they died in their tent. At this place, the work was amongst the hardest of the entire project. During what the Japanese terms the Speedo period, from April to August 1943, when the working day could stretch to 18 hours or more, it was the most brutal place. Its death toll can never be accurately known. When things were really hot towards the end there, when they were pushing that railway very hard, I think I used to start sick prey at about four in the morning. And I'd been up and been up till about ten the night before. And then you had to go and see these guys in the dark, trying to pick out who was fit to go and work. And work. work gangs were labouring here in daylight and in darkness, when bamboo flares and lamps lit the sight. And that is what suggested to someone the name that has stuck to Conyu Cutting, Hellfire Pass. They were coming on Hellfire Pass. The uh, biggest percentage of the time they were living on rice and what we call stink fish. It was dried fish. Uh, and there was more bones than there was fish. So, but you just put up with it. Sort of thing. There was nothing else you could do. Work here started in November 1942 with British prisoners and Tamil labourers. The first Australians arrived sometime around April 25th, 1943. April 25th is the day that Australia remembers her war dead, Anzac Day. The day on which the Australian troops first went into action in the First World War. Those who worked at this place suffered at the hands of their guard. All were beaten, many severely. Some, with, some were killed. But the death toll at this place and along the railway tells us more about the conditions in which the men lived and worked, the inadequate diet and the presence of disease. Dysentery, malaria, tropical ulcers, and above all, cholera took a fearful toll. 30% of Australians held prisoner by the Japanese died in captivity. That chap that was there died on his own. He always had somebody beside him. 
talk to him, you do everything you could for him. Even even though you knew you couldn't do any more for him, but you talked to try and comfort him and everything like that. You'll be right, mate. Don't worry about it. You'll be right. You'll be right. You know, most probably they knew themselves they weren't going to be right. But you know, if we wouldn't be doing this. We wouldn't do that when we go home. Most of the work done at this place was done with hand tools. Hellfire Pass was cut and blasted through the solid rock by men with hammers and spikes. Two-man teams, one with the heavy hammer, the other rotating the metal drill in the rock until a hole large enough to contain a dynamite charge had been gouged out. They sort of let the hammer do the work. And I would swing the hammer most of the day. And Harry would use the skill of getting it through the rock. And he would also say, Tom, don't brush yourself. Take your time. Play it easy. Uh, we'll, we'll get done. It's a mining term. That was the contract we had to do, and then you could go back. And the work they did at this place, day and night, was often in the worst possible conditions. The men had to walk to the work site, perhaps several steep kilometres from their camp. And in the wet season, for months, that was dangerous and it was unhealthy. It rained for uh, over a hundred days and the place was awash. The clothes in which the prisoners were captured soon rotted and their boots fell apart. Well, I was like about 150 days without boots, just getting ready. Mainly barefoot and with improvised loincloths, they lived on little more than poor quality rice, and their heroic doctors did what they could with virtually no supplies. I had to be on the saw. They had a bucket of boiling water there. They put the saw in the bucket of boiling water. Half a dozen fellas were holding this fella down, cut his leg off, and uh, put the saw in the bucket of water and washed it. I was it back to the bamboos. That is the story of this place. It is the story that has been told here in the Interpretive Centre. If you choose, you can walk through Konyu Cutting, Hellfire Pass. The rails have long since been removed, but the cutting, the rock faces, are as the prisoners made them and knew them and left them. If you choose to walk through the cutting, you walk where they walked and worked and lived and died. We started work on Hellfire Pass on Anzac Bay Monk and Fort Detroit. And we worked right through until it was finished. It was all solid rock. We uh, had to uh, blow it out dynamite and then what was there we had to push it over the bank. For years, this place lay hidden by the jungle. But it was identified afresh in the 1980s. And since then, with the support of the Australian government, has been restored as a place of memory and reflection. The Hellfire Pass walking trail is in sections. You can choose the length of walk that suits you best. After you leave this centre, it will take about one hour to walk to the memorial and back. The end of the trail is at the Hintop Road, almost 2.5 kilometres from the centre. You should allow three hours to walk there and return to the centre. An audio tour is available, which continues the story of the railway and the experiences of those who worked on it and describe some of the particular features that you will see on your walk. Please be aware that there are some steep sections, that the ground underfoot can be slippery, and that while there are some rest stops along the way, there is no water, and the center does not operate a pick up and return service. So make sure that you have the time, the energy, the weather protection, and the water you need before setting off.